So y'all remember when I said this in the does difficulty really matter in Persona video? Even the super bosses bar, maybe Elizabeth and Theodore in Persona 3 are no challenge either. Yeah, that's now f wrong. The Joker fight in Persona 3 Reload Episode Igus is by far and away the hardest boss in the entire Persona franchise. Never has a boss stumped me as hard as this one did. From the absurd amount of damage he does, the 32,000 HP he has, and the ridiculous amount of invisible rules you have to abide by, even with the most broken builds, this shit is going to be a pain in the ass on Heartless. On anything else, it's really not that hard, but god dude, Heartless Joker is no fucking joke. No pun intended. Let me just read off all the rules he has to start things off. So you can't inflict more than two debuffs onto him, you can't have charge or concentrate on your first turn, I guess can't nullify or drain any affinity, you can't nullify or drain an attack more than once at a time, you have to beat him within 20 turns, if he falls below 16,000 HP before a certain phase, he fully heals so you lose, you cannot crit him so physical isn't as good as it usually is, Joker immediately takes all of your buffs away and acts first when the battle begins, and during one of the phases you have to purposely be inflicted with ailments. If you fail in any of these aspects, he does sinful shell and one-shots you. What the fuck? Then on top of all of that, his attack patterns are random to an extent every turn. He inflicts ailments onto you and can just pull out physical personas to crit you with the ailments and probably kill you instantly. If he hits a weakness, he targets the party member on the ground with a severe damage attack to probably murder them. He can just give himself extra attacks with Will of Rebellion, and these aren't even the worst parts. If you make it to the final phases on Heartless, you have to have Fear, Confuse, Poison, and Charm inflicted onto the party at the same time or you instantly lose. If you somehow survive all of that, then you have to kill him QUICK because then he does fucking downshot that he gets from the tower social link in Persona 5 and does cruel attack on all your party members, and if that somehow doesn't kill you, then he just does sinful shell afterward anyways. Basically, you have to speed run this fight because you are NOT getting past these phases. But that's easier said than done when you can't crit him and he has 32,000 health while nuking your team and tanking better than any boss in the entire series. It cannot be understated how much harder this boss is than any other fight in the franchise. I've done basically all of them. I've beaten Score Attack on Persona 4 Arena. I've beaten Elizabeth, Margaret, Theodore, the Twins, Lavenza, all of them. And this Joker fight is just as hard, if not harder, than all of those combined. So with all of this in mind, imagine poor little Yandere Gogeta walking into this fight not knowing any of these rules. I went into this fully blind, no idea what I was doing or what to expect. And as you'd imagine, it didn't go well. Now I tried for a long time before I was even able to look up what the hell this boss was doing because my internet was down due to Hurricane Helene. I tried so hard to crit him, I tried debuffing him, I tried using different characters, but I think going into this fight blind means you're screwed, because how in the hell are you going to know to do something like purposely get inflicted with ailments? That is the direct opposite of what the entire franchise has conditioned you to do. I was using Junpei and I swear to god when he wasn't getting any crits for literal hours straight I was ready to go into the game and kick his goddamn ass not knowing it wasn't even his fault. And I'm sorry that I'm cursing a lot more than usual in this video but this fight has done more harm to me than I could have ever anticipated. This had to have taken years off of my lifespan and I can't say I'm shocked getting hit by sinful shell 827 trillion 500 fucking 8 blah, 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 would drive anyone insane. Before even any of this though, with Junpei seemingly not critting, me breaking rules I didn't know existed, I was doomed from the start because my persona builds were just not going to cut it. My only real damage persona for Aegis was Bishop Mountain, who was a Pierce persona with a bunch of crit skills, but obviously that was not going to work. And my support persona was dog shit too, and the Orpheus Tellus I made wasn't doing anything. I was treating this like the Liz fight when in reality I needed a completely different approach. Problem is though? I didn't know what the hell to do, and the biggest problem of them all is that if I wanted to try something different, I was going to have to grind an ungodly amount to see if it was even feasible. For example, I went and got accessories to nullify the party's weaknesses, which sounded like a fantastic idea to me, but it wasn't at all. So that was a complete waste of so much time and so many resources that I just can't afford to be wasting. I need those materials bro, they take forever to get. 
I probably spent just as much time grinding in the abyss of time as I did actually fighting Joker. And when I tell you that was the most boring ass thing I've ever done in my entire life, I'm probably lying because I've done some pretty boring ass stuff, but it's up there. So I went into this fight initially with the mindset that I'm probably going to fight Joker solo because that's how I've always personally done the super bosses. But with this high HP, I would never have done enough damage by myself. With that in mind, I was like, all right, let's bring Metis. So, you know, she has good firepower. She don't have weaknesses. But since Metis was fully a Fizz character, it did not work as well as I would have hoped, especially since Joker either resists or nullifies physical attacks on most of his phases, which is also why my Aegis build was not going to work. At this point, I'm just scratching my damn head because I've never been in this situation before where my ideas and builds were just instantly failing. So I just tried a bunch of shit, like I said. I tried bringing Junpei for crits, which he would never be able to do. I tried bringing Koromaru for debuffs, which wouldn't work because debilitate isn't easily usable and his damage isn't on the same tier as any of the other characters. I tried bringing Ken and Yukari for healing and support, which didn't work because I needed more damage and their support really wasn't doing me much good anyways. So at this point, I realized I'm going to have to rely solely on items and bring the best damage dealers. I knew for 100% certain I was bringing Akihiko no matter what since he has some of the best magic damage, and if he could do physical on a turn, he had the best physical skill in the game. Not only that, he has Matarunda, so I can keep Joker from one-shotting my entire team instantly. So that was one of three of the key parts of my team right there, but the other two I had absolutely no idea. But then I thought about it. Since physical wasn't going to be the sole thing I could rely on, there's one party member that I knew I was going to have to bring. The party member I'd given shit throughout the entire history of Persona 3 Reload being out. The party member I've ranked last in all of my tier lists, Mitsuru Kurijo. This was just poetic, like I can't even lie. My least favorite party member in the game was going to be vital in completing the hardest boss in Persona history. Not only was her magic damage going to be important to take advantage of, but her physical skill Vorpal Plate was going to do me some good as well. And the fact she had Raccoonda skills meant I could keep the damage piled up on the Joker as long as I kept that debuff up at all times. The devs had to have known physical is too OP in Persona, so they made this fight to balance the two out better. And I suppose the fact I had to use Mitsuru means they did a pretty good job of doing that. With two of the three puzzle pieces tied together, I needed that final link to bring everything together. I needed someone with a good range of skills, good support, and good damage. I wasn't sure who would fill this role since most of the party members didn't seem to fit that description very well, but the two I knew it would come down to were Metis and Junpei. While Metis's magic damage is lacking, she does have good support and damage despite not being able to crit, but then I remembered something that people told me on my episode I guess tier list video. Junpei's second theurgy, Blaze of Life, is a massive damage fire attack that fully heals himself. See, I had written this theurgy off because Fiscal is king in Persona, so I was just like, why the hell would you ever use Blaze of Life over Hack and Blast? Junpei's magic stat is also very low, so I just assumed it was mid to be honest, but I decided to take my commenter's advice and give it a shot, and I don't know why, but they were very much so right. Blaze of Life is far from mid, I was totally wrong. In fact, Blaze of Life was doing more damage than fucking Mitsuru's and Akihiko's theurgies, which I have no idea how that's even possible. I get it has the highest base damage value of any of the other theurgies, but for it to be this much more damage despite him having the worst magic stat in the game? It really makes me wonder how theurgy attacks scale. Maybe they scale off magic and strength, but either way I didn't give a shit because I knew Junpei was the final piece that I was looking for but it really did feel like everything I knew about this game was wrong at this point. Not only was Blaze of Life going to carry in the magic department, but he also has the best physical skill lineup, and he also has Maraku Kaja. So with the three of them together, I would have Matarunda, Maraku Kaja, and Marukunda. That combined with Aegis, who could cover anything else with healing skills, debilitate, and damage, plus everyone having access to items to use in the worst case scenarios, this was the recipe for success, and I knew it would work. Problem was, though, I did not have Junpei or Mitsuru built at all. I did not use them a single time throughout basically the entire fucking episode I used DLC. So I had to grind for hours to get them what they needed. The problem yet again, though, is I did not know what I needed. 
I didn't even know what items existed in episode, I guess, because everything is random. So I was either going to have to grind the hell out of every single monad door in every single different area for God knows how long to get everything I needed, or just look it up and see what I had at my disposal. After getting my ass blasted by Joker about 50 times or something like that by this point already, I decided to throw myself a bone and at least theory craft a build for everyone by looking up the items before going into the fight again. Since I wanted to maximize damage, I decided to get as many items as humanly possible to raise damage. So I got a Fire Amp Accessory and Fire Boost Sword for Junpei, an Ice Amp Sword for Mitsuru, and Akihiko already has a Leg Boost and a Leg Amp, so that was my damage covered, but I needed to cover the other slots. Since I wasn't going to be able to use the items to nullify the affinities for the party members, I just threw Enduring Soul onto everyone to survive the almost guaranteed crits Joker was going to deal, and I also gave Akihiko an extra Endure item since he didn't need more damage. As for the armor and all that, I gave everyone the one that reduces magic damage by as much as possible, and Mitsuru had an extra slot too, so I threw Firm Stance onto her so she could tank better. The funny part about this build is that as I was looking around for all the items and shit, I stumbled upon a steam guide that literally had one to one the same build that I used. So I guess great minds think alike. And once I saw that, I just stole the persona builds they used as well, which honestly weren't that different from what I was going to use anyways. Orpheus Telos was a no brainer of course, and I was planning on making him the support anyways with debilitate and salvation since he resists all affinities, and the Bishop Mountain build was similar to what I was going to do as well since I had already been using him for the whole game. Instead of building him around Pierce and Crit though, it was going to be better to use Dark Skills so I could pop the Dreamfest Theurgy since it does really good magic damage. So here's the full plan. I guess it's going to have Soul of Athena to nullify ailments. Cannon of Eminence with Magic Ability to increase the Dreamfest Theurgy damage, Legs of Anguish to reduce magic damage, and she's going to be 100% support besides using Dreamfest and Armageddon to deal damage. Akihiko is going to be a jack of all trades and keep Joker's attack down while keeping damage up, Mitsuru is going to do the same but keep the defense down, and Junpei is going to keep our own defense up. The reason we're using Soul of Athena to nullify ailments despite the ailment condition is because if we deal enough damage, we can skip that turn where he checks if the ailments are inflicted, so it won't matter. As for the final turn where we need all four ailments, we either kill them by then or we lose, so time is of the essence. With our personas built and party comp ready to go, it's time to get this shit started. It's our time now. Let's get this shit started. Even with everything planned, this fight was still a pain in the balls. Like I said, his attacks have varying degrees of randomness to them, so if he decides to do a certain attack order that just backshots my party, then there really isn't much I can do about it. I took a lot of advice from that guide I stumbled upon since it definitely had good info in it, but I had to freestyle in a lot of instances as well. There were so many damn attempts that wouldn't even get past the first few turns, and if an attempt went bad, I had to purposely get myself killed, which was so annoying, dude. Doing this fight made me genuinely appreciate Metaphor Refantasio's feature where you can just retry a battle from the start with no qualms. God, <laughs> did I miss that feature from the demo while I was playing this boss because I was spending equal time getting myself killed as I was trying to defeat him. This was by far the worst part of the whole fight. I could deal with the mind-numbing grind, I could deal with losing beforehand when my party and persona sucked, but this? This is terrible! Losing the fight instantly and taking forever to retry sucks! Turn 1 I would instantly start getting the buffs and debuffs ready, so we could proceed the fight without me getting one shot by his concentrated Megidolon. After that I'd heal and raise my attack with items, and then here is where the fucking resets happened over and over again. Right here, if I wanted to consistently deal enough damage to Joker to both get past the ailment phase and just win, I needed Fuka's concentrate and charge ability from Oracle to come through, and this is basically a 50-50 loss every single time. You have a chance to get the charge and concentrate, or she'll just raise your attack, defense, and evasion, which is just not what you need at all. My team can handle the buffs perfectly fine. I just need damage, and as a result, 50% or more of my attempts would just die here since I'm not wasting my time continuing the fight when my chances of winning are minimal. The amount of damage you lose out on not having it is just too much, I, it's just impossible, I'm just going to give up, not waste my time. That's not the only piece of RNG you got to deal with though, oh no no no, because the turn right after that can instantly kill you too if you aren't lucky with his attack patterns. Whether he crits you with physical, or just does an unfortunate lineup of attacks, there's a pretty high chance you're going to get destroyed on this turn. 
if you do somehow manage to make it through this RNG gauntlet though, then you've got a decent chance of winning the fight actually. Around this point after dealing with the previous couple of turns, this is where he'll start doing that ailment bullshit I mentioned before, which gives you some time to breathe since as long as you deal enough damage, you're not in any actual danger here. You can get some damage in and whatnot and you'll be fine, and this is where that charge buff from Fuka comes into play too, cause around here is the only time he's not resisting physical, so you can go crazy with everyone on the team and do thousands of damage. You'll then want to pop Fuka's Theurgy again, but this time it isn't too important whether you get the Concentrate or not. Once he advances to the next turn though, this is where shit gets really real, and this is the other biggest reset point of the fight. Here Joker props Will of Rebellion, which gives him extra actions per turn, and if his health is under 16,000, or below 50% basically, then he heals back to 100% HP, at which point you have lost because you will not be able to deal enough damage anymore. So you gotta get as close as humanly possible to that 16,000 health mark without crossing it. If he isn't under 16,000 health, he'll pop Dekaja again to remove all your buffs, then he pops Heat Riser. The very next turn he then pops Heat Riser again, then Concentrate, and then Megidolon. This is why you need the Endure items, because how the fuck are you supposed to survive that? You can't afford to have even one party member die, so you need to debuff him, buff yourself, and then guard with whoever is left because you need the best chance of surviving. This is probably the most toxic part of the entire fight to be honest, because the damage he's going to do to you is so fucking high and there's basically nothing you can do about it. This fight is far from over though, oh no no no, because after surviving that, he then goes into the random attacks once again, and this time it's even worse because all the enduring soul items I had are probably gone by this point, so if someone gets crit by Joker, then we lose, and it's this deep into the fight. I lost so many fucking runs to this part of the fight, it's just unfair man, and if that isn't bad enough, he gets one more from these crits, so then he pops Heat Riser just to pour salt into the wounds. You're gonna once again have to probably spend two or more of your actions to debuff him and heal, and then the next turn he pops Tetracarn, which honestly isn't that bad, but the problem is, we're running out of time. After this turn is when he starts to ailment shit again, but this time there's no getting around it. We either kill Joker within the next two turns or the fight is over. Problem here again though is if we didn't get Charge and Concentrate previously on the second Fuka Theurgy, we need it here or we lose. At the very end of the fight, there's about a 50-50 chance that you lose instantly, and I lost this 50-50 more times than I'd like to admit. It had to have been like 5 to maybe even 10 times I got here and just didn't get the Charge and Concentrate. I truly think I have the worst luck out of anyone to ever play Persona 3 Reload, because first it's Junpei not critting throughout the entire game, and then it's shit like this. Seeing Joker's health bar this close to zero broke my spirit mentally many times. This fight honestly isn't that long, but the fact there's so much RNG involved makes it feel like it's an eternity. I'm not going to say my build is perfect or anything because it probably isn't. I'm sure there's ways to make it easier or just consistent or just faster or all this, but this was the best idea I had and I knew it could work. It was just going to take some time to have all the pieces come together. Little did I know how much time and failure it would take though. I'll spare you the monotony of watching me lose for hours and hours straight, but all I'll say is I have approximately 100 gigabytes of footage for this fight, and that's not an exaggeration. I'll let y'all see some of the totally sane and calm moments I had during this fight, because I totally didn't get pissed off and want to break my own neck into a million little pieces while doing this. No, 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 not little old me. So I just looked it up. In order to, in order to beat Joker, you have to be weak to ailments because you have to fucking, against Mother Harlot phase, you have to be hit by poison and charm. So the fucking time I spent getting this fucking... Oh my god, the time I spent getting this was completely pointless then. But wait, hold on. If that's the if that's the case, what that means is when he does stagnant air and poison, I'm going to have to be guarding with someone because it's 100% going to hit everyone. Oh my god, dude, that's so fucking stupid, bro. So many stupid fucking rules to this fight, dude. Like, dude, who in the fuck is gonna know to do that? Fucking serious. You're such a fucking bitch, dude. You're such a fucking bitch-ass pussy. 
Dude, if he doesn't crit, I swear to fucking god. I'm so tired of dealing with this fucking bozo. Oh my god. He hasn't crit a single time. Can you even crit? Can you crit on Heartless? Maybe you actually just can't crit. That would make a lot of sense, actually. God, dude. Just stop. Just let me fucking quit. I mean, dude. I don't know what to do. Like, the game actually just fucking sucks. Like, this game is so bad. This fight is, like, so unfun, actually. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, there's so many invisible rules and shit that, like, it's actually just not fun anymore at all. It's like, okay, randomly turn. Okay, I'm going to inflict you with an ailment. Okay, I'm going to crit you. So, it doesn't matter. Like, however, like, it doesn't matter. Like, you just lose instantly. Like, this fight is bullshit, dude. So much fucking RNG, man. It's fucking stupid. I mean, there's nothing you can do if you just get inflicted with a fucking ailment. Like, if he does something that inflicts an ailment first and you fucking get crit, there's nothing you can do. Literally nothing you can do. It's fucking stupid. Like, this is by far the most fucking corny ass fight ever. Oh my god, dude. I'm just so done with this fucking game. I'm so tired. Like, I'm actually so tired of doing this fucking fight. Like, this is fucking ridiculous, man. Half the time I'm spending fucking is with these stupid ass turns. Just let me fucking lose already so I can go on to the next attempt. Stop wasting my time. Uh, why is Rush even a thing, dude? It doesn't speed up the battle at all. It's the exact same speed. Junpei did more damage on his Theurgy than Mitsuru with fucking Ice Amp and Ice Boost, by the way. Like, Mitsuru is so terrible, bro. Oh my god. Look, he's gonna do a physical attack and fucking crit, bro! That's so neat, guys. That's so awesome. That's so motherfucking cool. Can you just move me into a coffin so I never have to do this fight again? Bro, my theurgies are like fish food against Joker, bro. <laughs> they ain't doing shit. <laughs> I'm at the fucking. Tell me why. Tell me nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. But a mistake. I want it that way. Don't you dare kill a fucking Junpei or I'm at the. Alright, we're good. Okay, hold on. I know what I gotta do to win. Yeah, totally normal things to say while playing a video game for sure. After all these failed runs though, it finally happened. The God run where everything came together. The damage was on point, the RNG was blessing me, everything I could ask for. The only question was, would this finally be it? Would my suffering end? Oh my god, wait. Holy shit, wait, wait, wait. How did I not die? Oh my god, wait, hold on. Dude, if Fuka gives me charge and concentrate on the next Oracle, I think I win this fight. No, I definitely win, actually. Oh my god, Fuku. You're literally my favorite character in all of Persona. Just end my suffering, please. Dude. I mean, that, like, this is it. Like, I, it, it could be over right now. If she gives me charge and concentrate, I win. If she doesn't, I lose. Oh, dude, this could be it. Oh my god, please. I'm actually so nervous.
God damn it. With how terrible my luck was, I was really doubtful I'd ever beat this fight at this point. It felt like I was so close so many times, yet never close enough to actually finish it off for good. That is until the very next run where I was in a similar position. After attempting this fight for several hours in one session, my stamina was wearing thin. I was either beating it this attempt or I was done. Let's see what happened. That's not gonna be enough. No, you you can get past this phase. Like, there's no way. You can't do anything. You either kill him or you lose. Oh, let's go! Oh my god, I can't believe that killed! Oh my god, yes! Yes! Oh my god, three hours and 21 minutes! I can't believe that just killed. Bro, I was calling Junpei a bum and the only reason I won that is because he had fucking concentrate from the previous turn that I saved for him. Fuck you, Joker, you piece of shit! You're the fucking ever! I had finally done it. I defeated Joker, the hardest boss in Persona history. But what the hell caused him to appear in the first place? That was an easy fight. A mass of someone's thoughts or desires. Hmm. But they could have wished for something like someone really strong. Who? Who? Yeah, fuck you, Akihiko. <laughs> Akihiko just put me through 10 plus hours of pure straight torture because he wanted to fight someone strong. You're a bitch. You are such a bitch, bro. Okay, so Akihiko's bitch ass is probably the reason we fought him. So thanks, dude. I totally don't hate your guts or anything. Well, what about the rewards that we get for winning? That'll make it all worth it, right? You get the Omnipotent Orb and Emeritite Necklace, both of which are absolutely pointless because I have no reason to ever go back to this save file again because there is nothing left to do. This was basically a waste of time. Awesome! What matters most of all though is that I win, and my pride is no longer shattered from the countless losses I took at the hand of this mysterious masked boy. Overall, I don't know if I'd say I had fun or not because honestly, the RNG was just absolutely ridiculous. But hey, it was nice to have an actual tough fight come out of Persona, so we take those. So now I ask you, yeah you, the dear viewer watching this, have you fought Heartless Joker yet? Do you plan to? Have you beat him? I'd like to hear your stories regarding this fight because I'm sure y'all got plenty. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like and a subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot, and I'll even give you a free cookie on your way out. Here you go, homie. With that said, it's been your boy Yandere Gogeta, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out everybody, and have a great day.